All right. Well, I'd like to thank the media for coming out today uh, and thank the, uh, the guests that are here with me today. Um, from uh, Schuylkill County, we have uh, Representative Mike Tobash. From Monroe County, we have Representative uh, Dave Parker. Uh, Representative Jerry Knowles from Schuylkill County and um, uh, Cass Chise from the Carbon County and Lehigh Valley Realtors and Matthew Marks from the Lehigh Valley Realtors Association. Um, today we're, we're gathered here today to highlight uh, some of the opportunities we have uh, in the state uh, in regarding property taxes and just to discuss a little bit about the governor's budget proposal for 2015-16 and also 16-17. Um, last June we sent the governor a budget that was balanced uh, we put it on the governor's desk and he vetoed that entire budget. Uh, since that time, we, school districts in, throughout the, our region have had to borrow money um, and pay interest on those funds to keep their doors open. Um, most recently, school districts now are looking at their budgets for 2016, 2017, and, and with the uncertainty in Harrisburg right now, it's very hard for our school districts to plan ahead. Uh, in the latest uh, attempt to get a budget passed, we put it on the governor's desk on on December 24th, December 29th, he line item vetoed and cut $3 billion out of the education funding uh, for our school districts across Pennsylvania. And that has provided a lot of uncertainty. Uh, as we're gathered here in, in Lanchford uh, in, as part of the Panther Valley School District, I know the school districts are, because of this uncertainty, are looking at the possibility of having to increase property taxes and push that burden back on our, our local residents. I would call on the governor now to release that $3 billion. It's taxpayer money that has been sent to Harrisburg. The money is sitting in Harrisburg and the governor should release it and not push that burden back on, and uncertainty back onto our school districts. We should never allow disagreements in Harrisburg to affect the education of our children here in our commonwealth. Here, Students don't get a second chance at third grade or fourth grade, but the governor's policies right now is jeopardizing that classroom instruction. Also, the governor has delayed the uh, onset of that valuable EITC money that is necessary for our, our uh, private schools and parochial schools throughout our region. So with that said, I, I think it's important that we hear from people from across, or representatives from across our region, but also some of the realtors that are working in our communities as they talk about the impact uh, of increased property taxes. Uh, House Bill uh, 76 and Senate Bill 76 um, were, were presented in the House uh, earlier this session. We passed House Bill 504, which would allow for a 50% reduction dollar for dollar in property taxes. Uh, and then House, or Senate Bill 76 was up and it was a, it was a tie vote in the Senate and the governor, um, the Lieutenant Governor cast a deciding vote, vote to kill uh, Senate Bill 76 that that bill did not pass. But on top of that, the governor then called property tax relief a distraction. Uh, and I would have to say for the residents of Carbon County, property tax elimination is not a distraction. It's something that's needed for our communities to once again prosper. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Cass Chais um, to talk a little bit about um, what the issue that the realtors are dealing with with property taxes. Thank you. Currently, the um, realtors of, and actually the, the residents and owners of Carbon County have been faced with high taxes. Um, years and years ago, I remember when I'm originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania, one of the reasons why we came to Carbon was because of not really lower taxes, but just because of what the community would provide for us. And since we've been here, you know, again, every year taxes and, and our property taxes continue to rise. More importantly, Panther Valley School District has seen the most highest as far as millage um, for taxes and again it's really um, crippling this market there's values that have been going down every day sellers are forcing to basically almost give their properties away only so that they can move them and there's some owners too that are just faced that they just cannot even pay their mortgages anymore because their property taxes are more than what the mortgage payment is and this really should not be the dream of home ownership in this area is just really, I mean, it just keeps diminishing day by day. And we need to do something to make it back into that where people can afford their homes and be able to, you know, provide for their families. Because right now, that's just not the American dream. So we need help. We need relief. We need to keep talking. We need to keep this, you know, this issue on the front table. And we need to keep this movement going so that all the, you know, residents of Carbon County can have pride again in their homes and be able to sell them for what the true value is. Thank, thank you, Cass. I would also like to introduce uh, Matthew Marks from the Greater Lehigh Valley Realtors Association. Thank you, Mr. Heffley. Uh, just to echo on what Doyle and Cass said, 
Uh, as far as the realtors are concerned, property tax issues are our number one issue. Um, there are a lot of individuals who are unable to afford homes. There are a lot of individuals who are losing their homes because of the high taxes. Um, it's, it's really going to come down to you know, our representatives in Harrisburg to come to the table and to try to find some kind of solution uh, to help those individuals in need. Uh, we don't want our, our senior citizens to be losing their homes. Uh, we don't want our first time home buyers to be unable to buy those homes. Uh, so that's something that we're working on every day. Um, it's, it's really our number one issue and we hope that uh, soon a solution will come from us. Thank you. Sure. I'd like to introduce uh, Representative Mike Tobash from Schuylkill County. Thank you, Doyle. Well, thank you, and thank you for organizing this event today. It's important that we continue to talk about what's going on in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I think that Representative Hefley really hit the nail on the head. Look, at this point in time, at this juncture in the, in the Commonwealth, we've got people out there that have got a lot of frustration. And, 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 they, and they look at our Pennsylvania state government and they say, let's, let's come to a compromise. Let's settle a budget. Well, I can tell you that we have offered the administration four budgets. And uh, on this uh, last go-round, the governor chose to enact most of that budget, but it's not finally enacted. And this is the egregious part of this equation for me. Uh, in a budget of about $30 billion, uh, the administration is choosing to withhold about $6 billion. That's $6 billion of taxpayer collected money, money that we anticipate collecting from taxpayers that is not being allocated. And who's it hurting? Let me tell you who it's hurting. It's hurting our students. The reason I'm here today is to uh, join my colleagues and these job creators to talk about the fact that uh, we've got to keep Pennsylvania moving forward. We've got to stand up for taxpayers. We've got to stand up for students. We've got to stand up for our public education system. That budget that we had given the governor that was passed by the House and the Senate had about $6 billion of public education funding, of which the administration has cut $3 billion. Look, I've talked to my local local business managers from each of our school districts and I can tell you that if there's one thing that's certain and Doyle talks about uncertainty if there's one thing that's certain if he if we do not release the other 50 percent 55 percent of the funding these school districts are going to face major financial crises so today I'm here on behalf of the students of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to urge the governor to release the rest of the funding that we had allocated to our public education system, to release the rest of the money that we have allocated to agriculture, to our correction systems. Look, at this point in time, the fact is that when you withhold $6 billion of funding within the Commonwealth, there's going to be anxiety. And it is manufactured anxiety. Let's release the money, let's get back to the business of the constituents and the residents of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Let's release to let the rest of the money and let's go to work on next year's budget. Thank you, Doyle. Representative uh, Dave Parker from Monroe County. Thank you, Representative Hefley, for putting this together. Uh, I stand here today with my colleagues to express our mutual desire to make Pennsylvania the strongest economy in the nation. We believe in creating an efficient government that delivers excellent services to our citizens, positioning Pennsylvania to compete globally and nationally in the months and years to come. Instead of crippling Pennsylvania's economic growth with higher job-crushing taxes and dumping more millions into un unaccountable, non-transparent programs, our plan is designed to increase economic growth. We're fighting for families to keep more of their hard-earned money because we believe Pennsylvania families can, have, and will make wiser investments in their schools, communities, and economies than Harrisburg or Washington, D.C. When it comes to government's role, the test should be simple. Does this government program make Pennsylvania stronger, safer, better? Does this government expenditure make Pennsylvania stronger, safer, or better? For this government program, is there a better way, other than a government program, to get a better result? And if this program is a core function, it must be excellent and deliver a strong return on investment for taxpayers. Nowhere is this more apparent than in our education system. Pennsylvania taxpayers own 500 school districts. Taxpayers have invested billions into these school districts, and they deserve an excellent return on that investment. For the past 24 years, under Hold Harmless, our investment has been misallocated and misspent, resulting in inequities that are crushing some taxpayers and shortchanging students. 
We have a new basic education funding formula which clearly shows the 180 school districts that are underfunded. We need to focus on getting those 180 districts to the proper funding level and getting their property taxpayers the relief that they deserve. Panther Valley School District, where we stand right now, is currently underfunded by $4.5 million every year in basic education funding, according to the new formula. If the district had that money, it could reduce property taxes on the people who live here. Now is the time to target our education investments to the students and taxpayers of Panther Valley School District and to the students and taxpayers of the Stroudsburg School District, where I live, and the East Stroudsburg School District, the Pocono Mountain School District, and to the students and taxpayers of all the underfunded school districts across Pennsylvania. To make sure these investments pay off, we need benchmarks and best practices. We need cost savings efforts so funding gets repurposed to educating students instead of funding waste. We need students reading and writing more. We need students working on projects solving real world problems. And we need career and technical schools to be excellent because our economy and families desperately need these crucial services. We should be praising kids for getting into these vital industries. The people of Monroe County and Carbon County have been paying the highest percentage of their income to property taxes, more than anyone else in the state, to fund education. Our students deserve their fair share. Our taxpayers need relief. We have a new formula and now is the time to invest in our underfunded school districts and overtaxed families. Right now we have an historic opportunity before the General Assembly and the Governor. After decades of kicking the can, we have a new formula from the Bipartisan Education Funding Commission. We need the best education system so our economy and companies can compete and grow. Now is the time to put equity first in education funding and work together to lead our commonwealth. Representative Heffley. Thank you, Dave. And I think it's so crucial in what Dave talks about it, is last year, um, or in the last session, uh, there was a, a bipartisan commission that was set up uh, to look at the uh, funding inequities in our, in our local school districts. And that funding commission came out with the recommendations for a new funding formula. And that is part of this budget debate, as a governor does not want to apply the new dollars uh, to the, to the, uh, with the new formula. That new formula will relieve taxes in Panther Valley and Lee Heighton area alone. And if we can push that forward uh, with House Bill 76 or House Bill 504, that would be a tremendous relief for the property taxpayers here in our region. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and I would like to introduce uh, my colleague, Representative Jerry Knowles. Thank you, Doyle. And uh, to my colleagues, th thank you for uh, joining us here today. And Doyle, thank you for putting this uh, event together. It's so important that we get the message out there in terms of exactly what is going on in Pennsylvania. I, I think for some background so that people understand in terms of history, when we talk about our budgets, Ed Rendell was our governor for eight years. And I don't think there's anybody in the world who liked to spend more than Ed Rendell. But no, I don't know, maybe we found that guy, and that would be Tom Wolf. But when Ed Rendell was governor, the budget grew from $20 billion to $28 billion in eight years. That is from 20 billion to 28 billion dollars. It grew a billion dollars a year. And then Governor Corbett came into town and say what you want about him. In the four years that he was our governor, the budget grew from 28 to 29 billion dollars. That's a pretty good job for four years in terms of the cost of living, in terms of living within your means, which is what my constituents expect us to do. So then we have Tom Wolf come into town. He wants to go from 29 billion to 33.3 billion dollars over the course of two years. Over four billion dollars of additional spending. The people that I represent can't afford it. The people that I represent have spoken loud and clear, and that is to hold tight, to hang tough. Don't allow this guy to go crazy in terms of spending, because if we allow him to do that, this is only the beginning. 
We've got at least two more years to deal with this guy. So we're, we're criticized by some people for hanging tough, but we have to hang tough. We have to hang tough. I would remind everybody that back in June, there was a budget that passed the House and it passed the Senate and it went to the governor's desk. There was $1 billion in additional spending, somewhere in the area of 3.5%. That's reasonable. We gave $100 million more to education. That was his priority. So when somebody says to me, you've got to work with them, my friends, we have been doing everything in our power to work with him. He came out with this big spiel about property tax relief. So, I, I mean, he was throwing figures around of the sales tax going from 6 to 6.6, .6, and then it was 6 to 7, and then he talked about expanding the base, and I know I'm rambling, but that's exactly what he did. And then he talks about increasing the personal income tax from 3.07 to 3.70. And then he says, and we're going to use that money for property tax relief. Governor, what you were going to do is you were going to use 30% of those dollars for property tax relief. And you were going to take the other 70% and you were going to spend it on new spending. So, Governor, all I would ask you to do is sit down with our leadership in the House and the Senate and work with our leadership to provide a budget that the people can live with, a fair budget, a reasonable budget. And Governor, you need to remember that we are not all millionaires. Increased taxes mean a lot to the people that I represent. It's a stagnant economy that's kind of struggling to come back but people are hurting. So, Governor, we're not all millionaires. All I ask you to do is be reasonable and work with the House and the Senate to come up with a reasonable budget. Thank you, Representative Knowles. And at this time, if, if anybody from the press has any questions uh, for any of the, the folks that are here today. Go ahead. Kelly, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's important that, that, that we find those jobs. I mean, obviously, whenever you increase the minimum wage, it does lessen opportunities. And those should be entry-level starting salaries. I think what the governor did this week was, was I really it baffles my mind, by increasing just state employees, uh, you know, increasing uh, their minimum wage. Because what that does is that really puts an additional burden. It, I mean, if you have somebody that's contracting through the state for the school district, the school district now has to spend more money to pay those state employees. I mean, just to, to I'd say we're going to do it for state employees. I think the, the overall is when you look at, at the tax burden, already Pennsylvania ranks high, one of the higher states in the nation if you look at tax burden, and then those property taxes on top of that, and that's driving employers out of our region. I mean, we look at, at, at companies that are leaving, our, our regulatory processes are very cumbersome, and now we have a new administration that's actually applying more regulatory processes. We have a, a cogen plant here in, in our area, which uh, impact of about 100 jobs if that plant is shut down, but yet the, this governor is adopting the EPA regulations that'll shut down, and those are all above minimum wage jobs. So I think it's one thing to say we're going to increase the minimum wage. That's not going to allow people, you can't give somebody an, an extra buck an hour and then think that they're going to, you can raise their property taxes 2000 dollars I mean that's that's at the end of the day what we need to do is provide opportunities for businesses to survive and by just taxing upon taxing and more regulation I mean the governor's calling for a four billion dollar tax increase that's about thirteen hundred dollars per household uh, across this Commonwealth for a family of four I mean right here in in the in the Panther Valley and the Jim Thorpe area they're saying some of the highest percentages of their household income are going to property taxes we should be looking to eliminate those pro that property tax burden rather than adding additional spending uh, to, at the state level.
All right. Well, I, I thank everybody for coming out today uh, and being here. I thank my colleagues. I thank the folks from the, the Realtors Association, Cass and, and, and Matt, uh, for coming up here today. Uh, and uh, just uh, want to wish everybody a, a great day and a happy St. Patrick's Day.